Yeah, I, I think, uh, you know, obviously we have an intent to continue to grow the, the performance over time. We talked about moving to quad core, uh, and we're going to try to really stick to, uh, you know, the power envelopes that are kind of delivering. Tom talked about, uh, you know, an 80 watt version, a 65 watt version, 40 watt versions. And, you know, we really are creating some design points uh, that we can kind of uh, participate in. I think the real breakthroughs are going to come more at a system architecture level, and we're starting to have conversations about uh, power delivery and looking at other innovative ways to really address uh, the power consumption issue in the data center. Uh, so there's a lot of great work that still can be done uh, to not optimize just at a chip level, uh, but more at a system and even a data center level where you can do things like uh, thermal load balancing and, and other types of innovative techniques. So between the, the, the system and data center level innovations, and we're going to work on those with end customers and with OEMs to do our part because there's a lot of underlying technology we can build in in the future. So we're not done with uh, addressing the power consumption issues in the data center at all. Uh, but I think at a fundamental silicon level, you're going to see us try to participate in those power envelopes uh, that have emerged as kind of standard. Uh, I think balance is key as well. We've been reminded many times by our customers how the perform is that balance of power, but not sacrificing performance. And I even mentioned the, the FB DIM, memory capability, what it buys you in terms of reliability, scalability, and you've got to balance all these decisions right across the overall platform levels, Boyd said. So opportunity ahead, but balancing. Gervais Restaurant, authentic French cuisine in Silicon Valley. Well, it, we've done this before where you know, we bring a new memory uh, architecture to market and we don't want that to be a limiter uh, in terms of ramping the platform. So having done this for you know, years before, and we know there's issues with the channel, the distribution channel, don't have the buying power and volume. So what we, we go out and do is we go engage the major memory DIM companies, all of them, uh, to make sure they've got sufficient supply uh, and, you know, the, the, from a distribution standpoint, uh, the time we're launching the channel, the distributors have stock. Uh, and then, you know, there's, a, there's enough volume out there where there's not these crazy price premiums. So our objective is to make sure that there's, re, you know, good supply, reasonable price points, so that that's not a limitation at all as we go around the platform. It's a good question. Yeah. Is that, so I'd say today. Now, up until this point, all we have is test systems in play. We weren't shipping. Today is the first day one where we're shipping parts to our OEMs. So I am confident, though, as, as I said, it's, it, you know, it's, it's probably hard for you to understand, but the, 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 the enterprises don't just flip a switch necessarily. There's all these relationships that have been in place for years that we've developed, you know, from servers to client to architectural uh, you know, collaborations. and we throughout this last year, year and a half, really struggled relative to, you know, a, a competitive offering. We've stayed engaged with our end customers, so it's not as if, you know, we have to start all the selling uh, and engagement today. That's been going on. Now it's a matter of the seed units that have been in place, all the collaboration we've done. How does that yield orders from end customers to our OEMs? And I'm very confident that starts today, where. Uh, you know, the, the OEMs are building their systems, and, and again, we've got a number of examples uh, across the board. The, the market segment share data, when, when it even worked in our favor, it, it's a lagging indicator. Uh, I, I remember a year and a half ago, when we felt we were losing some momentum uh, in some designs in some of these high performance computing areas, our field was saying, we're losing designs. But the market segment share data came in and said, we're gaining share. And I wasn't resting any better because I knew the leading indicator was our field saying we're losing momentum. So AMD is probably uh, talking about the past because we haven't had the 5100 series in play. Uh, going forward, it's a different game. What Boyd can help me out here, but Nathan, a, a lot of customers want to know that there's going to be enough stability and legs, if you will, to a platform out there or not. Uh, so that's not to say we're going to have uh, you know, uh, the new intercept, uh, the Halen, for example, uh, before then. But the longevity of a platform is very important to customers. They're making decisions kind of for the long haul. So yeah, and I think the, the absolutely the idea that, that people can invest in Bensley today and have multiple new versions of processors leading all the way up to 45 nanometer dual and quad core processors to get an investment, return on that investment. That's absolutely true. Uh, but this doesn't mean that we don't have other platforms that address certain other market needs on, on our roadmap that we're just not prepared to talk about today. So 
Bensley absolutely stable and available and uh, enabling enabled with new processors for uh, for the lifetime out through 09, but that doesn't mean that we're not going to continue to stay competitive with new innovations for other market requirements. In the corner. Again, it's a, we don't so much drive that level of segmentation as much as our customers do. The usage miles for MP are very, very different. Uh, it's, it's only about 10% of the market. But uh, very, very, uh, you know, you know, performance is very important. Uh, database applications, reliability is very important. Um, in that segment of the market, okay, you know, it, you know the innovation level, the system vendors, the OEMs, uh, go forward with is different than in the volume DP space. So I don't even think, you know, from the standpoint of, we're, we're, there's nothing we're going to be able to do to, you know, whether we, we want it or not, that would actually cannibalize that segment of the market. The, the requirements are very different. And as a matter of fact, in Tulsa, which we announced we're pulling in to the third quarter, uh, we're going to get significant breakthroughs in online transaction processing applications, which if you look at the market segment share we've lost in MP, it's been at the very high end of the segment because we're disadvantaged on performance. So it's that element that we're looking forward to winning back and we expect to see very good momentum there. But I don't uh, imagine that even with the wild success we're expecting with the 5100 series, that's going to cut into the, the DP segment. Yeah, the main requirements in MP are reliability. Uh, we talked about the reliability features of the Bensley platform in the 5100 series. We actually have greater reliability capabilities in the existing MP platform. Uh, and then transaction processing performance, we expect to be more than 20% better than the competitive alternatives. So uh, we're very, very excited about Tulsa. We'll come and hopefully invite many of you back to talk about it relatively soon. Uh, I think, Joe, it gets back to the message I tried to deliver here today is sustained leadership. Uh, and it goes across the platform. So it's performance, it's performance per watt, it's the level of innovations around you know, virtualization, bandwidth or IOAT, the memory capability. That's what we're really staying focused on. And you know, there's gonna be some leapfrogging. I mean, when I was with you guys in April, we were benchmarking against a 2.4 gigahertz uh, Opterod. We couldn't get a 2.6, now we got a 2.6. When the, the new socket comes in or whatever, we'll go benchmark against that. Uh, frankly, I think the, you know, the, the customer base uh, votes at the end as to the value they see. And uh, I would imagine you could ask uh, Pixar or BMW, they're not making decisions based on a one quarter roadmap. They're looking at evaluating roadmaps from our competition, from us, over a long period of time and saying, where am I going to place my bet? Right. I'm, I'm sorry to, to be a pain here. Let me ask it as directly as possible. But do you think you know, AMD's 65 nanometer parts? will be as good as yours? will be as good as ours. I would expect that, you know, when AMD is shipping 65 nanometer, we're still going to show leadership in many of these benchmarks we talked about today. But yeah, I think in the, in the, uh, in the overall system, we're, we focused a lot on system power consumption out of the wall. Uh, so everything we deliver into the platform and everything that we influence from the chipsets and networking to everything else uh, plays into that. Um, you know, so we talk about it, you know, we made, we talked about, you know, dramatically lowering the power of the processor level, but being able to be willing to take a small power premium to get the capacity, reliability, and flexibility benefits of fully buffered DIMMs, for instance. So uh, we've made a lot of those trade-offs to figure out where the chipsets and the processors and the memory technology that we influence, you know, what are the right trade-offs? And, and, and Tom said this very, very well. It really is a series of engineering trade-offs to deliver the best performance, price performance, performance per watt, reliability, and other features like virtualization that customers need. Uh, and you can see the result with the 5100 series at a system level is, is pretty pretty compelling. And we'll continue to make those trade-offs. We'll, we'll add power and components if that, if that added power delivers users enough benefit uh, for the segments of those parts to participate in. And we'll continue to look for ways to reduce the overall system power consumption and power consumption in the data center uh, through innovations with our, our OEM customers and end customers. Gervais Restaurant, authentic French cuisine in Silicon Valley.